historically, malaria has been managed in quite a presumptive manner. The assumptions that we made have been that every fever was caused by malaria. And so the disease control approach has been to give every child with a fever an antimalarial. More recently, with the advent of rapid diagnostic tests, we now have the capacity to determine whether a child with a fever actually has malaria. When somebody is having one line on control, it means this person is, is having negative RDD, no malaria parasites. And when you find somebody with two lines, you know that there is malaria. We used to get very many patients using SCTs without knowing that these people don't have malaria because just used to treat. You see the patient, the way the patient is telling you, the way you're seeing the patient, something just give the drug. So you find that you are increasing the what? The risk of drug resistance. The introduction of other DTs is going to really focus us a lot so that we make proper orders, we reduce on wastage, we reduce on the money, and, 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 and we are able to, you know, to manage properly. One of the biggest barriers I see with this test is that uh, all of us would want us to have a positive test. Everybody knows that malaria is curable, it is treatable, it is a short-term disturbance. If it is managed adequately, somebody can improve. So in their mindset, everybody would desire to have a positive test. And that is where we need to take the message, not only to our health workers, but also to the community. Twizraha, Baloba said, Munyo Muzrama to Savala. Alana Bezrim in Amsuija. Then you find that some caregiver don't, don't agree with us that the RDT is doing well. Now you start saying, ah, this thing is deceiving. Now, me, I can't, I can't go back to the other health center because those people are deceiving us. Their things are not working. Now they decided to do what? To transfer themselves from here to, to be to Health Center 4. And you know the Health Center 4 have what? Has a microscope. Sometimes you find the, uh, the other agents are not, uh, now, they are not there. Now those people will just give them coatem without shaking what? Checking blood for malaria parasites. Now they'll just give them. Then those people, those caregivers of our the patient, they will be happy. One thing we need to do is to work upon the issue of recruitment. One of the challenges, as I see, is that to introduce that kind of style in a system where you have very few health workers. And that's where we have to engage the government. Once you sort out the question of human resource, if you know that the staffs are there, then we can even begin going into some of these quality improvement approaches. Today we come here, we came here with the team to, to visit here and to do the immediate support supervision, which we usually do after distribution of other DTs for malaria in the centers. So when we come, when we follow them, we look at how they are performing other DTs, we, we look at uh, how they are managing the patient, and after that we sit with them to give to give health workers the, the feedback on what we've seen, what we've observed, and we come up with a grid plan and a grid action is to be taken by both sides. Here we have only two, so this is completely understaffed, they're understaffed. We also notice that the majority of them come when they are, under, they are the children bring themselves or children bring other children so that when it takes a lot of time for, for him to explain to the children. A 
it's not as simple as just providing the commodity. The training needs to be effective. The sensitization or the behavior change that we are trying to achieve, we need tools for that. And we have to ensure that the medicines that are required to treat malaria, as well as some of the negative results, for example, pneumonia, are provided. And if we evaluate ourselves over a longer period of time, I know uh, we will have reason to celebrate. Thank you.